here to preview the 2020 Smith County High School football season with head coach Scott Murray. Now, coach, I'll start off by asking about the coronavirus. It's something that's been on everybody's mind. How have you guys been dealing with it over the summer? Well, it's kind of hit and miss because nobody really gave you rules in the beginning and then they gave you a plan and then they back out of this plan and go with another plan uh, from the state and from the CDC and everything. I think that our school system's done a great job. Barry Smith, Mr. Whitaker, I think those guys have made some really strong decisions and stuck behind those and I think we've been able to work through it because of that. But it's been difficult. It's been uh, different to say the least. Our, our kids have really done a good job of trying to social distance and we've had to come up with some new ideas of, uh, you know, when we before we were getting fully dressed, when we were just helmets and shoulder pads, we would do that part in the indoor facility. Uh, and we try to put dots on the field when we were just lifting weights before we got into actual practice where we actually kept those kids separate by 10 yards a piece so that if anyone did contract it, uh, we would pretty much be safe the rest of us around and hopefully not have the entire program shut down. Do you think it's going to impact the, the season in any way? Well, I'm scared that it is. Uh, my vote, and I, I don't think it was a popular one, but I really wanted to play baseball in the fall and come back in February and play football. I just felt like most of those kids had already been playing baseball all summer, and they were probably baseball ready at that time. And you can do a little bit better job of social distancing with that sport. And I'm hopeful that this will be, you know, we'll kind of have a grip on this by that time and we could probably get a full football season in. What I'm afraid is going to happen are people are going to have kids pop up during the season or right before and their programs are going to be shut down. They're going to miss games or lose games. I, I feel like, you know, people may be lucky if they get to play three, four games this season just because they are going to be kids and coaches pop up with this. Talk about the quarterback situation. Cameron Spivey out. Uh, he graduated. Who's in, and then what are you expecting out of him? Well, coming into the to the spring, Johnny Lida was probably the guy because he was the backup last year, but he had a high ankle sprain uh, during the summer with one of his basketball camps. And that's my son, my 12-year-old son, actually broke his ankle a week later, and he's been back for two weeks now, and Johnny's just now, hopefully, we're, we're hoping next week will be his they're, you're going to let him go and, and play. So he's missed a lot of time with that high ankle sprain. Uh, but it's given him a time to sit back and kind of look at the mental part of it. He's stayed involved with our, our meetings and things like that and on the field. So we don't think he's going to miss a lot. He's a great athlete. But during his time off, we were able to move Andrew Wheely back, who has played quarterback in the past. So it wasn't anything new to him. And we've had added uh, Dennis West, we put him there also. Uh, he's one of the best athletes that we have on the team. So we feel like we've got some capable guys in position, even if Johnny doesn't make it back. Of course, we'd love to have him back. And uh, who knows, you know, there's gonna be a competition there for a couple weeks when he does get back. So we don't we don't give positions to anybody. It was kind of him, but then he got hurt. But we don't want to take a position from someone through injury. Uh, so he will have an opportunity to get his spot back. But we feel really good about Andrew Willie and Dennis West. And we also have uh, Clayton Rigsby. And uh, we have uh, Ryan Martin that are freshmen that are working at quarterback, and we feel both of those have potential to be really good down the line also. So, uh, you know, Cameron Spivey is tough to replace just because he'd been there so long and such a smart athletic quarterback with, uh, you know, all the characteristics that you want. But we think we're sitting pretty good for the future. What all of those guys are young also and coming back next year, so we think we're pretty good for the future. What about the skill positions? You lost 90% uh, of your offensive output as far as wide receivers and, and, and running backs. So who, who's going to be stepping up in those positions? Really, that's kind of been the unknown. And, and things got thrown at us where we could actually start some contact here so late. Uh, there are really a lot of question marks out there. Uh, uh, Caleb Crawford has really stepped up at the running back position. We've also moved DJ Burke back there. He's a really big body uh, in the backfield. And once again, we've got some young guys that uh, we feel like are, are really capable of carrying the ball. And then we've got a guy that's new, uh, a homeschool kid that's come in, Luke Dillon, who uh, brother played for us last year, Zeke. He's another really good athlete. So we think we've got some guys that are capable of running the football for us. What about depth in the trenches? And also talk about uh, your strength and conditioning program as a part of that. Well, our, our strength and conditioning program, Coach Powell does one of the best jobs around. He does my strength and conditioning. He's also my defensive coordinator. But once again, COVID-19 kind of dampered that because I, once it got to the point where you're going to have to shut down if kids are getting this and you're trying to social distance, it really doesn't do any good if they're touching the same ball, weight bars and things like that. So we continued with our weight program, but we went to a outdoor body weight type thing, body weight squats, 
lunges, uh, push-ups, things like that to try to keep the guys in shape and maybe not gain a lot of strength, but at least keep what we had at that point. And I don't know that anybody else did that, but I just wasn't willing to take the chance of going in the weight room and, and uh, catching it. And I'm sorry, what was the rest of that question? Uh, it, just about <laughs> depth in the trenches. Okay, depth in the trenches is, uh, that's probably our strongest area at the moment. Uh, we have uh, Tyler Bear coming back. Uh, we have DJ Burke coming back, who's played some fullback and some tailback, I mean, tight end. Uh, we don't have a lot else returning there on the line that played, but we do have a lot of big bodies. We probably have around 20 to 23 offensive linemen right now. Uh, and that's something that's probably never happened here before, and it's something that most people struggle with finding enough linemen. And we feel like we've got 10, 11 guys that are really capable of going in and playing a football game. So depth at the moment, if we can stay healthy, is not going to be an issue. And we're probably one of the bigger football teams you're ever going to see. We had a transfer kid come in, Dane Woodard, who's six foot nine, 340, uh, probably going to be D1 talent. Uh, we mentioned uh, DJ Burke. He's six foot three, 240, playing tight end, fullback, tailback. Uh, we've got several freshmen. Javi Gaspar is a six foot one, 310 pound guy that stepped in and playing some center for us right now, and he's a freshman. Um, Ty Martin is another big kid that's helping out there. Um, it's just, uh, I, I hate to leave anybody off. Of course, Jimmy Enoch, I'm sorry, I forgot Jimmy. Jimmy's coming back from last year. He was a true freshman that started at right tackle. Uh, and he's put on some size. He's at 6'3", 6'4", now, and almost 280. So we expect great things out of him also. So if there's one place we feel really good about at the moment, if we don't have injuries, we think depth-wise on the offensive and defensive line, we have a chance to be pretty good. And the great thing about that is all those kids are coming back. <laughs> You talked about guys playing multiple positions um, for your starting lineup. Uh, do they play multiple positions? Do you have you know one one player that that just plays that one position? How is that going to work this year? Well, uh, we're blessed. We we have our numbers up to around 57, 58 kids. We've only lost a couple of kids through this whole thing, and that's certainly a blessing. But we think and we hope that we're going to have enough players that we're not going to have to play everybody on both sides of the ball every snap. Uh, in the ideal world, and there's a possibility that you know maybe three or four of those offensive linemen only have to start on that side of the ball. But there are a couple of those guys that are, you know, DJ Burke played both ways last year, and he's probably going to have to play both sides of the ball a little bit more than some of the rest of them. And we've got the big kid, Dane Woodard, you know, I'm probably going to look crazy if I don't have him on the field. So uh, he may have to play a little bit more both ways, but hopefully, at least in the trenches, you don't want those kids having to play every snap. So we feel like uh, having those kind of numbers there is going to allow us to spot play people. Maybe you start on offense and you're go in with a second group on defense. Now, when you get into the skill positions, those guys can run all day, and uh, you pretty much just kind of have to nail down your best four or five guys there. And, and normally, they play most of your snaps. And then, But we do have some really quality kids behind them that can rest them also. Talk about your defense as a whole and what you're expecting from them. Well, the expectation's always the same. We're, we're going to fly around. We call ourselves the Dirty Birds. And that's, you know, we not because we're dirty. We just play wide open and, uh, you know, we don't cheat or do anything of that nature. It just kind of gives us a persona that we're going to get after things and we're going to hit you and beat on you until the whistle blows. And we make sure that in practice, uh, that's the expectation and we meet it. And hopefully that's going to carry on to the football field. It did last year. And, you know, things have been different this year. We haven't been able to practice quite so much and maybe not stress that to the level that we normally do, but we hope that carries over and it's something that we're known for. Talk about region expectations. What are people saying about you and what are you expecting? Well, the, the region expectations, like Murphy Fair's book, uh, came out and uh, we were ranked second behind Upperman. Uh, of course, I voted for us. I tell my kids, you know, I'm not going into a game thinking I'm getting beat, so uh, I don't care who knows, I picked us to win the region. Uh, when we play Upperman, I expect to win. That's my expectation. May or may not happen, but. Um, I feel like we're in strong contention. I think we can compete with anybody there. Uh, we have a, a really strong region. I know Sequatchie and uh, York are returning a lot of players, and it's just a really physical ball game anytime you play those guys. And we know what Upperman has and uh, the tradition that they're building there. And, and Coach Kane does a great job with those guys. Uh, Cannon County has been coming up, up, up for the last few years. You know, they're not the Cannon County old. Uh, and Grundy, I think that guy's getting kids to come out, and I think at some point he'll turn. So it's not a, it's not an easy region, but I put us somewhere near the top or, or you know, I can't look my kids in the eyes. Finally, Coach, talk about the progress that you made so far and what you're expecting in the future. 
the, the main thing that we wanted to do is, is make it fun for the kids again and a, a good um, family atmosphere. Uh, the numbers had really dwindled. You know, at one point, you know, this team was filled in almost 100 players. And the last few years that had dwindled down. When I got here, they were around, you know, somewhere around upper 20s, lower 30s. And last year we were able to build that up to 40. And at this year, at one point, we had over 60. So now we're down to about 57, 58 kids on the roster. So we feel like we're headed in the right direction. We have somewhere in between 20 and 25 freshmen that are out playing football right now. Um, and they're excited, they show up every day, they work hard, they're a great group. And I just, I think it's just gonna keep carrying that way and it's just gonna continue to grow and build. So it's headed in the right direction. Uh, we're young, we're not gonna use that as an excuse, um, but we just wanna continue and build off of what we did last year and hopefully continue to roll. And especially when this younger group is older, we expect some really great things out of this football program. All right, Coach, hopefully the coronavirus doesn't tamper the, the, the football year this year. And uh, thanks so much for talking with us, and uh, best of luck to you guys uh, for the football season this year. Thank you, JR.